Hey, Dale Little here in uh, the small community of Bethlehem, North Carolina today. Um, the next few weeks we'll be here. Um, be back returning to Romania in early May. <clears throat> but uh, right now I'm going to <clears throat> look. I've, I've been studying uh, recently and, and talking about the uh, end times called eschatology, um, the last days, which involves, <clears throat> in that, it involves the um, uh, the beast, the Antichrist, uh, other names is known by, um, and um, <clears throat> the mark of the beast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let me try to hurry on through this. I'm, I'm using my iPad. I, I, I try not to uh, call out individuals. I, hey, I get it too. Um, you know, stuff I put up, I'm constantly getting this. Well, you just need some discernment. You need some wisdom. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I'm not immune to it either. Um, it comes with the territory. <clears throat> but when somebody is teaching things that are, are false, and, and this particular, and I'm not going to show his face. Some of you recognize his voice. That's okay. Um, you know, I can't help some things. <clears throat> if I told you what he's saying, I, you know, some of you identify him. Uh, he's, <clears throat> he's a, I'll just be honest, he's got a very likable personality. I I've enjoyed listening to him. I don't enjoy hearing the, the, the mess that he teaches, though. Um, <clears throat> does he have a good heart? I don't know. Um, uh, you know, he's, he, I watched him from um, for the past year, a little over the past year, and um, I have <clears throat> seen what he prophesied all through 2020 of how wonderful things were going to be, how God was just going to bless and pour out his blessings on America and the world, and this great revival is coming. Listen, I dealt with that in the, the, the book of Joel. Uh, that is talking about this great revival, thereby to end times revival, is talking about in Scripture the time when Israel will finally recognize Jesus as the Messiah. That's the great revival it's talking about. It doesn't say anything about the church. And so, <clears throat> yes, there can be pockets. Of, it's possible to have revival. I'm not saying it's not. But that is not the great end time revival that it's talking about in the scripture. And so we need to get over some of this stuff and, and learn to discern what the word of God is saying. Um, uh, the same with the mark of the beast. Uh, anytime I talk about the... Um, if I talk about eternal security, if I talk about, uh, um, you know, the pre-tribulation rapture, um, that's when I get these, well, you, you just need some discernment, you need wisdom, um, other things. Uh, but I just preach the truth. I preach what the Word of God says. And so uh, <clears throat> as I, I point some of the things out of this, and it's because it's so prevalent, this teaching. I heard this several weeks ago from somebody else. Uh, another source, and evidently that's where he got it from. It sounded good, and that's what a lot of pastors, unfortunately, a lot of these prophets, uh, self-described prophets, do submit. so often is they hear something that sounds good, and so, you know, hey, I'll preach that too. Um, but um, it's just not true all the time. Matter of fact, the title of this uh, message that he was giving here is The Truth About the Mark of the Beast. Well, it's it's all nonsense. It's not no truth there, uh, and so let's straighten it out a little bit. Uh, now I'm using my iPad, so <clears throat> may not be. It's hard to get exact starting at the exact right time. It may be a few seconds off, so I think I've got it set right uh, for the right time at this. But listen. Even if you say no to a vaccine, but say yes to the world, you're still marked. My God, somebody ought to hear me tonight. Even if you say no to a vaccine or a microchip, but you still embrace lawlessness, you still embrace lasciviousness, you still embrace deviance, you are still marked. You are carrying the mark of the beast. Now I'm not here to argue about a vaccine. Or okay, uh, so uh, there you have it. Um, you, you know, the mark of the beast is not a mark. That's, uh, well, it's a, you know, he's spiritualizing everything. Uh, it's not a real mark, it's a spiritual mark. Uh, well, <clears throat> we'll look and see what the Bible says in a little bit, but the Bible definitely talks about uh, being a, a distinct mark. 
Um, and, and I point some things that the air is out here. And he, you know, he preached some, much of this message is very good. It brings out about morality and and living righteously in this world. Now, that's great, but uh, the the conclusions he draws from the mark of the beast is just way out there. Uh, let's go just a little further and. Uh, <clears throat> How close we can get on this one. Said that the word was on their mind, and so here that here it is. Watch here this. it is. That the mark of the beast is a an, an ideology, a belief, a doctrine, a philosophy that imprints itself on the mind. That without this imprint, you will not be able to interact in the world system. Okay, uh, so there, you know, the mark of the beast is not a real mark. It's not a chip, it's not a um, vaccine, and much, I, you know, uh, never have been sold on all that anyway, but, um, <clears throat> more time, well, maybe two more times, I don't know. If you're bored with prayer. If you're tired of church, if you don't want to read the Bible anymore, if church is boring, if you would rather be somewhere else, if you would rather be somewhere else than in the house of God, and I'm not talking about just the physical infrastructure, but I'm talking about the gathering of the saints. If you're more comfortable with the world than you are with God, then there's a mark. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody talks about the Antichrist and we're looking for a physical being to show up. But let me tell you something. The Bible is clear, 1 John 2, that the Antichrist was in the world 2,000 years ago. That is completely false. Uh, John talked about the spirit of Antichrist. He said there are many Antichrists, but the Antichrist is yet to come. And he is a real person. He's not a, just a, a, an ideology. He is a real person that is yet to come. And the Bible does not say that he was there. John did not say that he was already there at that time. John said there were many little Antichrist, but uh, and there were, the spirit of Antichrist was there. It's been in the world, but not the Antichrist. So there is a great distinction there. And this man should know that. Um, he's been preaching well long enough to, to be familiar with what the Scripture says. Um <clears throat> someone you're not married to you're marked oh no no i'm oh, not mark I'm not the beast that chip. yeah but you still watch pornography you're marked you're marked that's his mark good preaching <laughs> except it's, that's not the mark paul told us in romans 7 <clears throat> whoever you yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey And the last one right here is um, and I'll we'll comment <clears throat> a little more on it then. The lawlessness, the Bible says in the last days that the false teachers will teach lawlessness and they will call it grace. Now I don't know where this is taught in they the word of God. I, I'm not familiar they with they will it. use the term grace to teach lawlessness and licentiousness and all forms of idolatry, and they will spiritualize it. I don't know they where this is at. They will spiritualize wickedness. They will spiritualize licentiousness and lawlessness, and they will call it grace. They will use the word of God. They will twist scripture to justify an evil lifestyle. There are preachers that will come, and they will they will use scripture. They will twist it, and they will bend it in order to accommodate their lawlessness, in order to accommodate their immorality. This is the mark. There again, there's the mark. This is the spirit of the age. This is the spirit of idolatry that is, that is pervading our culture and even trying to creep its way into the church.
Yeah, like I say, that that that's pretty good preaching if it was just uh, <laughs> if he'd quit trying to identify with Mark. I mean, what he did, uh, you know, I didn't do the whole thing um, uh, because he he got this Mark. He started going through quoting different scriptures of where it talked about the Mark uh, or, or the a Mark. Uh, well, the scripture is full of references to marks. I mean, you know, you can have a check mark for all I know. Um, <clears throat> don't know of anything in the scripture like that. But, uh, you know, you talked about Cain having a mark. Uh, and, and I get where he's, you know, getting some of that. But you can't just go through scripture and pick up where it says a mark and, and apply it to the mark of the beast. The, you can't, uh, you know, we've all learned, I thought, most of us in school, that you don't compare apples and oranges. I mean, if you're trying to write a report on uh, maybe a freeze destroying the apple crop uh, for a certain year, you don't uh, get all the numbers of how many apples were uh, maybe destroyed by the freeze and then add the oranges. Well, let's include oranges in here and we'll report it as apples, you know, all the apples that were destroyed. No, you don't do that. And you don't do that with Scripture. You can't uh, mix, just mix things up just because they have a certain name. Uh, make a, a certain word, and that's the same way. If you, you got codes in the Bible, uh, God doesn't hide anything from us. It's there for us to see. All it takes is some study and the, the Holy Spirit to reveal these things to us. And and you know Scripture um, uh, rather than just you know a little bit of Scripture. You need to know. The Bible told uh, Paul told Timothy to study to show yourself approved. Um, <clears throat> so Revelation fourteen eleven here he he painted himself in a corner. And that's what always happens when you teach false doctrine. Okay, if the mark of the beast is really an ideology, if the mark of the beast is really all these sins that he's talked about. Now, he's got another video right after this one, or right before, I'm not sure, that talks about this great revival that he talked about all through 2020. It's uh, He doesn't make any explanation. i never seen anything. Why all this stuff that he prophesied for 2020 did not happen. He just goes on and says, well, it's coming in 2021 now. Um, makes no excuses and makes no, just like, like it didn't happen. That he never said all those things. Well, he did, and, uh, you know, he needs to repent, just like any of us do, and like I do. Uh, if I find out I'm teaching something false, if I've been wrong about something, and I do make mistakes occasionally, uh, I have uh, Matthew chapter 24. Uh, I've taken scriptures out there and quoted it as applying to the church and to the, uh, you know, before the tribulation period. But that's primarily talking about the children of Israel, and it's primarily talking about the tribulation period, um, <clears throat> if you look at it. But yet I, <laughs> I have made the mistake of using that terminology where it talks about the days of Noah, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of Son of Man. Um, and which will, that would be when he comes at the end of the age, at the end of the tribulation period. He's coming back first. Look at First Thessalonians, chapter one, verse twenty. I think it is the last verse, and talks about Paul talks about uh, how we're looking forward to, you know, being caught up, meet Christ in the air. That's the next thing that's coming. There's there's nothing that comes before that. Now Jesus will come back and put his feet on this earth at the end of the tribulation period. He won't be caught up in the air. He'll put his feet on the earth. And the difference is. Where the first time his people were caught up in the air to meet him, this time he'll put his feet on the earth and he'll send his angels out to gather the elect together, those that were saved during the tribulation period. And so uh, there's a difference there. Uh, anyway, let me go on. 14:11. This is where he painted himself in a, a real corner. If all these people are guilty of the mark of the beast they just talked about, then there's no hope for them. Where's this great revival coming from? If people are guilty of, of living worldly, people that's lost are living like these things, if that's the mark of the beast, there is no hope. There can be no great revival. There's to be no one left to save. Because listen to this. Revelation 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receive the mark of of his name. So, if these people, if that's the real mark of the beast, the Bible says there's no hope for them. 
If you take the mark of the, the real beast. mark of the beast, there's no hope. Nothing left. So this nonsense of the mark of the beast being an ideology is completely false. Now, that is a mark of Satan. It's a mark of, <laughs> of the world uh, and the world system. Uh, but this Antichrist is not a system. Listen to this. These are some of the these are some of the titles of the Antichrist. Of course, the Antichrist is one of them. And John did say that there were many, many, excuse me, Antichrist already in his day. But he also pointed to the Antichrist as yet to come. So he does bear the, the title term Antichrist. He's also known as the man of sin, the son of perdition, the man of lawlessness, the abomination of desolation, or the abomination that maketh desolate, and the beast, and that's just a few of them. There's many more titles that this person is known by. This is not a system. This is, not, this is a real person that will be coming. And if you take his mark, if you're left here, if you're not ready to meet Christ today and he returns to, before this day is over, you have no hope. It's gone. You will take the mark of the beast. That'll be the only way you can eat and have food. It'd do you no good to resist even that because you've rejected Jesus Christ. You're rejecting, at the sound of my voice, the words of God, where he says that whosoever will, let him come. And that without the remission of uh, sin, there is no, or if that's shedding, excuse me, if that's shedding the blood, there is no remission of sin. It means you accept the blood of Jesus Christ. You do it now. Once you've received the gospel and he takes his church out, there's not going to be second chances. The Bible says, as a tree falls, so shall it lie. And so as you make your bed, then, you know, that's the way it's going to be. Uh, you don't want to be here. When the rest of us are caught up in the air and gone, and you've already rejected accepting Jesus Christ. So you need to do that right now. You need to do that today, or it will be too late. None of this nonsense about getting another chance. Uh, the only people who have a chance will be those that have never heard the gospel. But you have. You've just heard it. Jesus Christ died to save you. Jesus Christ paid your debt of sin on the cross. You either accept that and you ask for his forgiveness and you ask him to come in and be Lord of your life or you will be left here when he returns and you will take that mark of the beast. And by the way, and this man states it in part of his, in, in his talk here, his, his lesson that um, the church is what withholds this evil, the, the Antichrist. And that's what the Bible says. It, it says that uh, until he be taken out of the way, that he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then will that man of sin be revealed. Well, he, he that be taken out of the way is going to be the Holy Spirit in, in the church as he lives in the church of, of God. And uh, the church does withstand against evil. Uh, oh, if it was not for church, the church in this world, it would be horrible. ISIS would still be wreaking havoc. It, it would be, and not just in a few locations, they would be everywhere. Our head would be gone by now bloodthirsty if everyone you know one evil fighting another evil uh, none righteous if the church leaves once it's gone so like I say you need to make that sure today and get it straightened out the, the, the mark of the beast you know I don't think it's a vaccine I don't think it's it might be a chip who knows uh, in some way but regardless I'm not going to be here, so I don't need to worry about it. But it is not the beast, and the, the mark of the beast is not just an ideology. It will be a real mark, and you will take it 
if you are left here and have already rejected Jesus Christ. I mean, you're lost anyway. You're going to hell anyway. That's the only place that's left for you. You can't go to heaven because then sin would be there. And you have to accept Christ took care of your sins or, or they're still with you. They're a little here in Bethlehem, North Carolina.